Veloster's voice text messaging. Here's two. The Veloster from Monday. Engineered for whatever. Amashi service Adam 10. Gonna go with is uh, the U stream 
map, a battery pack, just to keep it charged. And then a hot spot. It's on it. So I'm gonna be doing this. When you go to a place, I'll be, I'll be, I won't necessarily be able to give them the perfect. I'll be able to have a list and show them what they. We did set up by Charles, I give that one We were basically like... Okay, the people will call you, I come to the on the 4th, 6th precinct, 24th, 32nd, Grand Concord. I know. Are you familiar with the collaborative tool better means? That's a really good way to get things done, because... Uh, yeah. Is that what you're telling me? Are you just not happy with how they're treating us? <laughs> I've been assaulted four times today. Today? Yeah. All one day? Four separate assaults. Um, you, you have a pretty big smile on your face for men who have four assaults. <laughs> Um, and they they hide their badge numbers. They put they put uh, the uh, piece of velcro thing over their badge number. Right. I'm like, tell me your badge number. They won't tell me. Um, anyway, so we're we're hoping to launch with a domain soon and a site where other cyclists can network and come together and join us on this big group ride. And the goal is to go uh, through the Gulf and you know to the West Coast, and then I don't really know. If it's, it's at Fox, so.
Uh, I'm joined here by Police Commissioner I'm Ray Kelly, Fire Commissioner Sal Cassano, Sanitation Commissioner John Doherty, Corporation Gas Council Michael Cardozo, and Deputy yeah, Mayor Claus Halloway and Howard Wilson. At 1 o'clock this morning, the New York City Police Department and the owners of Zuccotti Park notified protesters in the park that they had to immediately remove tents, sleeping bags, and other belongings and must follow the park rules if they wish to continue to use it to protest. Many protesters peacefully complied and left. At Brookfield's request, members of the NYPD and Sanitation Department assisted in removing any remaining tents and sleeping bags. This action was taken at this time of the day to reduce the risk of confrontation in the park and to minimize destruction to the surrounding neighborhood. Protesters were asked to temporarily leave the park while this occurred and were told that they would be free to return to the park once Brookfield finished cleaning. We are now ready to reopen the park, but understand that there is a court order which we have not yet re actually received in joining us in enforcing Brookfield's rules and so the park will remain closed until we can clarify that situation. But I want to stress that our intention was to reopen the park and to let people go in and express their First Amendment rights to protest or their First Amendment's rights, Amendment rights to just peacefully enjoy the park and say nothing. In the future, protesters and the general public will be welcome there to exercise their First Amendment rights, rights and otherwise enjoy the park, but will not be allowed to use tents, sleeping bags, or tarps, and fully must follow all park rules. The law that created Zuccotti Park required that it be open to the public to enjoy for a passive recreation 24 hours a day. Ever since the occupation began, that law has not been complied with as the park has been taken over by protesters, making it unavailable to anyone else. From the beginning, I've said that the city has two principal goals, guaranteeing public health and safety and guaranteeing the protesters' First Amendment rights. But when those two goals clash, the health and safety of the public and our first responders must be the priority. And that is why several weeks ago the city acted to remove generators and fuel that posed a fire hazard from the park. Over time, I have become increasingly concerned, as had the owners of the park Brookfield properties, that the occupation was coming to pose a health and fire safety hazard to the protesters and to the surrounding community. We have been in constant contact with Brookfield and yesterday they requested that the city assisted in enforcing the no sleeping and camping rules in the park. But make no mistake, the final decision to act was mine and mine alone. The park has become covered in tents and tarps, making it next to impossible to safely navigate for the public and for first responders who are responsible for guaranteeing public safety. The dangers posed were evident last week when an EMT was injured as protesters attempted to prevent him and several police officers from helping a mentally ill man who was menacing others. As an increasing number of large tents and other structures were erected, these dangers increased. It has become increasingly difficult even to monitor activity in the park to protect the protesters and the public, and the proliferation of tents and other obstructions created an increasing fire hazard that had to be addressed. Now, some have argued to allow the protesters to stay in the park indefinitely. Others had suggested that we just wait for winter and hope the cold weather drove the protesters away. But inaction was not an option. We could not wait for someone in the park to get killed or to injure another first responder before acting. Others have cautioned against action because enforcing our laws might be used by some protesters as a pretext for violence. But we must never be afraid to insist on compliance with our laws. Unfortunately, 
The park was becoming a place where people came not to protest, but rather to break laws, and in some cases to harm others. There have been reports of businesses being threatened and complaints about noise and unsanitary conditions that have seriously impacted the quality of life for residents and businesses in this now thriving neighborhood. The majority of protesters have been peaceful and responsible, but an unfortunate minority has not been. And as the number of protesters has grown, this has created an intolerable situation. No right is absolute, and with every right comes responsibility. The First Amendment gives every New Yorker the right to speak out, but it does not give anyone the right to sleep in a park or otherwise take it over to the exclusion of others, nor does it permit anyone in our society to live outside the law. There is no ambiguity in the law here. The First Amendment protects speech. It does not protect the use of tents and sleeping bags to take over a public space. Protesters have had two months to occupy the park with tents and sleeping bags. Now they will have to occupy the space with the power of their arguments. Let me conclude by thanking the NYPD, the FDNY, and the Department of Sanitation for their professionalism earlier this morning. I should also note that last night I spoke with Governor Cuomo to inform him of our course of action, and he offered any help if he thought it was needed. Thank you.